Welcome to the second lecture on the subject English Literature. The theme of the lecture is the highest achievement of old English literature, B of. Objectives. By the end of the lecture, students should be able to do the following. Verbalize why Beowulf is important as a contribution to English literature and within the old English language. Analyze the character of Beowulf as a commentary on the values of the Anglo-Saxons. Identify crucial points of legend, myth and history in Beowulf. During the lecture, we will discuss the following questions. The first one. Characteristics of epic poems. The second, Beowulf, the poetic masterpiece of English literature. And the third, the Beowulf plot and details of the story. An epic poem is strength in narrative work of poetry. These long poems typically detail extraordinary feats and adventures of characters from a distant past. The word epic comes from an ancient Greek term epos, which means story, word, poem. The meter of epics varied depending on cultural custom. Ancient Greek epics and Latin epics were typically composed in dactylic hexameter. Old Germanic epics, including those in Old English, typically contained non-rhyming alliterative verse. Later English language epics were written in Spenserian stanzas and black verse. An archetypical epic poem typically is written in a formal style. It contains third-person narration and an omniscient narrator. It frequently invokes a muse who provides inspiration and guidance to the poet. It also takes place in an era beyond the range of any living memory. It typically includes a journey across a variety of settings and terrain. Features a hero with immense bravery and resolve. Epics have the following main characteristics. It opens in medias res, it means in the middle of things. The setting is vast and it covers many nations, the underworld and the universe. It starts with a statement of the theme. The use of epithets, a characterizing word or phrase used in a place of a name of a person or thing. It includes long lists. It features long and formal speeches. It shows divine intervention on human affairs. The heroes embody the values of civilization. Out of the popular ballads or chiefly of the minstrel poetry, which is partly based on them, regularly develops epic poetry. Perhaps the minstrel finds a number of ballads which deal with the exploit of a single hero or, or with a single event. He combines them as best he can into a unified story and recites these on important and stately occasions. As his work passes into general circulation, other minstrels add their ballads until at last, very likely after many generations, a complete epic is formed, outwardly continuous and whole, but generally more or less clearly separable on analysis into its original parts. Or, on the other hand, the combination may be mostly performed all at once at a comparatively late period by a single great poet who with a conscious art waves together a great mass of separate materials into the nearly finished epic. Not much Anglo-Saxon poetry of the pagan period has come down to us, but the most important remaining example is the epic Beowulf of about 3000 lines. This poem seems to have originated on the continent, but when and where are not now to be known. It may have been carried to England in the form of ballads by the Anglo-Saxons, or it may be Scandinavian material later brought in by Danish or Norwegian pirates. At any rate, it seems to have been taken its present form in England during the 7th and 8th centuries. The epic Beowulf is considered to be the first written masterpiece of English literature. This poem was composed by an unknown author. 
Many parts of the poem were added later and the whole poem was written down in the 10th century by an unknown scribe. Now this manuscript is in the library of British Museum. This poem tells of the time long before the Angles and Saxons came to Britain. There is no mentioning of England or Britain in the poem. The scene is set on the southern coast of the Scandinavian peninsula. The poem shows the warriors in battles and at peace, at feast and amusement, their love and adventures. As he appears in the poem, Beowulf is an idealized Anglo-Saxon hero, but in origin he may have been any of the several other different things. Perhaps he was the old Germanic god, Beowulf, and his exploits are originally allegories like some of those in the Greek mythology, of his services to man. He may, for instance, first have been the sun, driving away the mists and cold of winter, and of the Sams and hostile forces personified in Grendel and his mother. Or Beowulf maybe really have been a great human fighter who actually killed some especially formidable wild beasts, and those superhuman strengths in the poem results, through the similarities of the names, from his being confused with Beowulf. This is the more likely because there is in the poem a slight trace of authentic history. Beowulf presents an interesting, though very incomplete picture of the life of the upper warrior castle among the northern Germanic tribes during their late period of barbarism on the continent and in England, a life more highly developed than that of the Anglo-Saxon before their conquest of the island. About King Hrodgar are grouped his immediate retainers, the warriors with whom he shares his wealth. It is a part of the character of a good king to be generous in the distribution of gifts of gold and weapons. Somewhere in the background there must be a village where the bondmen and slaves prov uh, provide the daily necessaries of life and where some of the warriors may have houses and families. But all this is beneath the notice of the courtly poet. The center of the warrior's life is a great hall of the king, built chiefly of timber. Inside there are benches and tables for feasting, and the walls are perhaps adorned with tapestries. Near the center is the house, whence the smoke must escape, if it escapes at all through a hole in the roof. In the hall the warriors banquet sometimes in the company of their wives, but the women retire before the later ravelry, which often leaves the man drunk on the floor. Sometimes it seems there are sleeping room or niches about the sides of the hall, but in Beowulf, Hrother and his followers retire to other quarters. War, feasting and hunting are the only occupations in which the warriors care to be thought to take an interest. Beowulf is the protagonist and one of the original epic heroes. With his brave and noble nature, he defeats many dangers that have harmed his people. Beowulf is a young knight. He is ready to sacrifice his life struggling with the enemies. Beowulf exemplifies the traits of the perfect hero. The poet explores his heroism in two separate phases, youth and age, and through three separate and increasingly difficult conflicts, with Grendel, with Grendel's mother, and the dragon. Although we can view these three encounters of expressions of the heroic code, there is perhaps a clear division between Beowulf's youthful heroism as an unfitted warrior and his mature heroism as a reliable king. In his youth, Beowulf is a great warrior, characterized predominantly by his feats of strength and courage, including his fabled swimming match against Breca. He also perfectly embodies the manners and values dictated by the Germanic heroic code, including loyalty, courtesy, and pride. Beowulf's moral status becomes somewhat ambitious at the poem's end. Though he is deservedly celebrated as a great hero and leader, his last courageous fight is also somewhat rash. The story is set in Scandinavia in the 6th century. 
Beowulf, a hero of the Geats, comes to the aid of Hroga, the king of the Danes, whose mate, Hall Herod, has been under attack by a monster known as Grendel. After Beowulf slays him, Grendel's mother attacks the Hall and is then also defeated. Victorious, Beowulf goes home to Gitland and becomes king of the Geats. Fifty years later, Beowulf defeats a dragon but is mortally wounded in the battle. After his death, his attendants cremate his body and erect a tower on the headland in his memory. The poem probably consists of four parts describing the lives of people of that time. The first part deals with Beowulf's fight with Grendel, a monster who came to King Hroga's palace and killed his people. In the hand-to-hand struggle, Beowulf tears Grendel. In the second part, Grendel, who is mortally wounded, runs away to his den to die. Grendel's mother, a sea monster, tries to revenge Beowulf and renews attacks on the palace. Beowulf has to fight with her in her den. There is a very terrible fight and Beowulf is in triumph. The third part, King Hroga offers him to stay in his kingdom, but Beowulf decides to go to his people and after the death of his own king, Beowulf becomes a king and reigns them gloriously for 50 years. The third part deals with Beowulf's fight with the dragon and being already an old man, he is mortally wounded but slays the dragon and frees his people. He dies nobly, he sacrifices his life for his people. Beowulf's victory over the monsters symbolized the triumph of man over the powers of darkness, evil and death. Tales of the story Full title Beowulf The author is unknown Type of work, it's a poem. Runner, alliterative verse, elegy, resembles heroic epic, though smaller in scope than most classical epics. Language, it is written in Anglo-Saxon, which also called Old English. Time and place written. Estimates of the date of composition range between 700 and 1000 AD, written in England. Date of first publication. The only manuscript in which Beowulf is preserved is thought to have been written around 1000 AD. Publisher. The original poem exists only in manuscript form. Narrator. A Christian narrator telling a story of pagan times. Tone. The poet is generally enthusiastic about Beowulf's feats, but he often surrounds the events he narrates with a sense of doom. Tense. It is written in past tense, but with digression into the distant past and predictions of the future. Setting. Time. The main action of the story is set around 500 AD. The narrative also recounts historical event that happened much earlier. Setting. Place. Denmark and Gitland, a region in what is now southern Sweden. Protagonist. Beowulf. Major conflict. There are three main central conflicts. Grendel's emanation on Harriet Hall, the vengeance of Grendel's mother after Grendel is slain, and the rage of the dragon after a thief steals a treasure that it has been guarding. The most overarching conflict is between close knit warrior societies and the various menaces that threaten their boundaries. Plot of the story Beowulf. Introduction. Grendel terrorized Herod for 12 years. Rising action. Beowulf arrives to fight the monster. Beowulf kills Grendel. Grendel's mother arrives to avenge his death. Climax. Beowulf kills Grendel's mother. Falling action. As a king, Beowulf fights and kills the dragon. Resolution. Beowulf dies from the injuries. The motives in Beowulf help the reader understand the importance of ritual, place and culture during the time period. Conclusion Beowulf is an old English epic poem which consists of 3,182 long lines. It is considered to be one of the most important books in Anglo-Saxon literature. The poem is set in Scandinavia Although it was written in England, it uses different dialects of Old English for the spelling and has many different linguistic styles. 
The lines in Beowulf use a lot of alliteration, meaning that they repeat certain syllables or sounds. Other well-known poems and stories use this technique. It is about the Scandinavian hero who defeats various monsters, the most famous of which are Grendel and Grendel's mother for the king of the Danes. The last part of the poem describes the hero Beowulf's funeral. It is not known with certainly who wrote Beowulf, although it is thought to have been put together sometime between the 8th and 11th centuries. The only known existing copy of Beowulf is now in the British Library in London. The manuscript was put in paper frames to protect it in 1845, although it is still very fragile. This is the end of our second lecture. At the end, you are given revision questions. The first, what is an epic poem? The second, from about when does the only existing Beowulf manuscript date? The third, what theme is illustrated by Grendel and his mother, vice versa Hroger and Beowulf as well as Herod and the Mirror? The fourth, who wrote Beowulf? And the last question, when was the oldest surviving manuscript of Beowulf written about? Also, you can see the glossary and terms concerning the lecture. At the end, you are given references for further learning.